Welcome to Beyond the Beers. Men breaking the stereotype through conversation. We men love a good yarn, some banter, even better over a beer or tea. Sadly for many men, it never goes deeper than that. This show is a place for men to go beyond the surface level conversation, a chance to learn, listen, laugh, and grow. I'm your host, Mike Campbell, man coach and author of Amazon bestseller for men's health, Unleash Your Alpha. Let's break stereotypes through conversation. Let's go beyond the beers. Hi, I'm your host, Mike Campbell, and today I have with me Mr. Scott Tweedy. Scott is a TV host and professional prankster, basically. You rocked up to a prank photo shoot. I have nothing to say to you. <laughs> now, you're going to learn a lot more about Scott in a later episode when I interview him. But today, we're going to turn the tables and Scott's going to interview me for our first episode. So, Scott, let's get into the show. Over to you, mate. You're a brave man, Mike Campbell. Mike Campbell and I, we met on a 12-day charity cycle for Project Futures, which is all about raising awareness to end human trafficking and human slavery, both in Cambodia and here in Australia. So... We went to Cambodia, that's where we met up, 12 days from one end of the country to the other, 12 long days <laughs> with a bike seat and uh, bike pants and lots of chafe cream on as well, but <laughs> the chafe cream. it's where you and I basically started the conversation, became friends, yeah. and it was an amazing experience for me to actually have 12 days of meeting people like you as well, and I, I wonder if you're nervous today that I'm actually running this interview, are you? I'm probably more nervous than getting on that bike, actually, yeah. You should be. You should be. I've got some ripper questions lined up. Well, Mike, let's have a sip of beer and get into it. Cool. What made you become a man coach? And why did you want, and do you think it was so important for men to have more conversations? Um, so, for me, I suppose the journey to being a, a man coach um, was quite a long one. It was basically 30 years or so of my life, right? Um, I started as a personal trainer about 12 or 13 years ago, and by nature I'm very curious and very observant. So when I started working with people, and mostly it was men, um, I soon realized there was so much more than the physical stuff. Um, and I soon realized really that it was, a lot of it was mental. And so being curious, I kind of got into that. I started educating myself and upskilling and, and diving into the things that helped my clients. Then I started to look at it and I figured out, why, why the same things coming up all the time? The same issues, the same problems. And for me, it kind of boiled down to a couple of things. One, physically, we weren't really where we wanted to be. And that kind of spread to any different guy, regardless of where he was. There was always something there we weren't happy about. And then mentally, we weren't kind of where we wanted to be either. And I was seeing it in myself, in my friends, and my clients, this general kind of just meh, like, you know, life's hard, work's hard, and, and this acceptance of mediocrity, basically. And it really spurred me to question it and dive into it. So I did. I started, um, I was working on myself a lot. And I started looking into what is it about men? And that's when I started researching, talking to psychiatrists and psychologists and all this stuff. I kind of went down the rabbit hole. And uh, I found that, yeah, we've, I think we've just kind of forgotten how to be men. And we just don't quite know. And this journey into manhood from a boy is quite grey. We get told to man up, to harden up, to, to be a man, and it's such a narrow picture. We basically get told to push our emotional side away and keep things in. So it really lit a passion in me that, that I wanted to address. Was this, were you working obviously as a personal trainer in lots of different like capital cities? Is it just one city that this has happened to? Or have you found now talking and discovering with this with people that it is a national, an international problem, yeah. or not problem, but an issue that keeps coming up? Yeah. Yeah, so that was exactly it. So I started, uh, I'm in New Zealand, but so I started in Christchurch, I moved to Wellington, then I lived in Scotland and London and Ireland before moving to Sydney. So I saw this everywhere and it was, yeah, incredibly common, absolutely. And it was something that, again, you know, I observed things and I can sit back and take it in and it just slowly nudged away until I really all of a sudden realised fuck, this is happening all the time. And I'd, again, been through a bit of that journey myself. When I was at university, I was super lost. I had no direction whatsoever. Um, it was all reptile brain, eat, drink, <laughs> drink beer, um, get laid, basically. And I'd been in that place. I came out of university with no real direction, um, but pressure that I think I'd probably picked up from my family and society and stuff. It wasn't necessarily real. But it was like, do the right thing, basically. And that's what I was seeing everywhere. 
Also, what some viewers might not know is you were like borderline becoming a professional rugby player. So rugby was a huge part of your life as well, which is obviously a massive lads culture. You know, <laughs> it's all about drinking and just once again, as you said, getting laid and winning games. So did you find then coming out of that rugby culture, it opened up your eyes as well to this whole like man world? Yeah, I think that was probably not necessarily coming out of it, but being in it. You know, I was um, like, like all of us, we have different hats we put on and different elements of our lives. And of course, when I go into that culture, it's probably, it was never as heightened. You know, you might be on a bus trip somewhere and it's super laddish behavior, which of course I loved and I, and I enjoy and I think it's pure, like absolutely healthy. But it's when it, go, it never goes beyond that, or, which is what I was seeing, or um, it stays there. And I see a lot of guys, and this is what I was seeing, a lot of guys never being able to go beyond that, that laddish, bantery kind of blokey behavior and have real conversations and this is what I've seen um, then in my business coaching guys the theme of having a conversation was so common to me it was so natural um, and I started you know let's have the conversation have the conversation kind of thing and I really realized man we just we just hide from conversations we ignore them we don't even realize that we should have one and it could solve so many things Mike, you obviously enjoy talking about conversations like this. So what topics don't you enjoy talking about? What makes you a little bit uncomfortable? Um, I think loads of things do, right? One of the things that I've, I suppose, worked on is uh, and leaning into and embracing those things. So I'll still do them, whatever they may be. So probably um, more frequently, they used to be more emotional ones in relationships, say, um, but I'm you know, I'm more willing to, to have a crack at it, even though I might feel uncomfortable. Um, and one of the things for me that I suppose uh, really helped with that was realising that when we feel uncomfortable and we worry about oh, having that conversation, we build it up in our minds, and it's never really that bad. And we're kind of thinking about worst-case scenario, but we actually don't think about the worst-case scenario, because if we did, it's usually not that bad. So that's helped me to, to lean into those conversations a bit more, even though I still feel uncomfortable. What do I struggle to talk about, though? Um, for me, it's probably more around um, maybe things with my business. So for me, integrity and transparency is um, really, really important. And, you know, sometimes business, certainly when you're an entrepreneur, is not easy. It's tough. It's hard. It's a grind. Sometimes it feels like you're in the bottom of a massive hole. Um, and so trying to be honest with my audience and my clients and customers and so on um, without looking like you know I can't service them so maybe honesty and conversations in and around that the other one's probably when it comes to situations where you're uncomfortable about the conversation that's going on you don't agree with it you think perhaps that you know it shouldn't be happening it's whatever it may be so standing up and, and making it you know taking a stand and, and actually saying something um, again I think I'm, I'm better at it but absolutely those are the ones that I'll still struggle with around my friends perhaps um, but depending on loads of situations but those would be the ones that make me probably the most uncomfortable when I struggle with. Well your advice, so say we're in a group surrounding right now with the boys at the pub and there is a conversation going on and you don't agree with it, is it always right though to butt in with, with your right response or sometimes can you just take a back seat and go look these guys don't know what they're talking about, I know where I stand and there's just no point in me wasting my energy right now talking about that. Absolutely, so that, I think like everything, there's a spectrum and you're always just going to have to find where and when you fall in on that. So there's times where in my coaching and stuff I talk about your care factor, your ability to give a fuck. And that would be a circumstance perhaps where you just got to realise I'm not going to give my fucks to this and I'll just let it roll. Absolutely. Um, but then there might be a topic where it's like, you know what, this isn't on and I feel like I should say something. And it might be something as simple as, you know what, I'm not happy with this conversation or let's out a line or come on man, pull your head in, like whatever your relationship is. But yeah, absolutely, there'll be times where you just pull back and don't get involved perhaps. But I think we've got to make sure we don't always use that as a default because then it's just easy to let things roll when we might have to stand up and say something. So give me an example. Give me a pub example right now where Mike Campbell would come and step into that. So yeah, I mean it would probably be with my mates. And so an example wasn't um, in a pub, but it was essentially on the way to a pub. It was for a Christmas party with my mates. And we were in a car, there was a bunch of us, um, and one of the boys, I was actually speaking about some of my work and someone I'd, um, a, a client of mine that I helped. 
And one of the boys was like, oh, what was his problem? He had a small dick, you know? Was he trying to compensate? I mean, like, what is that? And I spoke in the moment. So like everything, with retrospect, I could have handled it much better. But I basically just called him on it and I said, what is that? You know, insert name. I was like, that is shit chat. And it's not on. And that was basically it. Yeah. It was an awkward silence for a moment. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, we teach the world how to treat us, so he knows not to talk like that because it's out of line, basically. Yeah. Back to, like, the uncomfortable conversations, and obviously each and every one of us have our own little, like, gauge where we, we want to talk about things and other things we, you know, feel uncomfortable doing it. Do you find when you bring that up with yourself or bring it up with friends, there's, like, almost like a floodgate, though? Like, once you go into that zone, they just want to share it and, like, embrace that conversation? Um, yeah, perhaps. I mean, and... and Probably speaking to that, I, I'm in this space all the time with my clients. So yes, in that space. Um, I'm probably not as proactive in that area with my mates. Um, you know, I want to really find out what's going on with them and, and have a real conversation. Um, but because I do it all the time, a lot of the time it's, you know, if you're a chef, you want to come home and not cook kind of things. Yeah. So I will lay off that a little bit because the last thing I also want to be, I don't want to be preachy and be that guy around my mates. Yeah. You know, I've got to learn to, to, to find the level, I suppose. Um, but if some people have never done it and they realise, oh, wow, I can talk about this stuff, absolutely, it might, it might open the floodgates. And then it may come down to boundaries, which is something that we all need to find anyway. All right, Mike, it's 2016. What does it mean to be a man in this day and age? Oh, good question. Um, obviously, this is something I talk about a lot. So we're talking about conversations. This is something that, I, that I'm passionate about, Absolutely. And for me, it's just the fact, first of all, that we need to redefine it because it has been very confused. Masculinity has had this very macho, one-sided, kind of hyper-masculine um, picture for a while. I think the converse, which it can be very great, is that very new age, kind of fluffy masculine, you know, hold hands and chant type things. And, and I think what we need is that happy medium. And for me, it's got to start individually. It's got to start with knowing who you are uh, as a man and therefore you can show up in the world as you. Um, authentic, absolutely. And, and I actually borrow, um, I'm just going to sound like such a geek now, I actually borrow a term from the ancient Greeks. Um, they had this nailed. And they had a term called Zeus energy. And for them it was male authority accepted for the sake of the community. And they defined that as robust health, Compassionate decisiveness, intelligence, goodwill, and generous leadership. And for me, that kind of sums it up. I think that that's something any man can take ownership of for himself and will play out in his own life in his way, as long as he knows who he is. So you talk about the outdated masculine measure of success. So how do you define success today? Sure. So I suppose to, to touch on that very quickly, I think... Um, as boys, we're taught to you know, hide our emotional side, basically. And then as we become teenagers, there's these kind of three things. Athletic ability, sexual success or prowess, and financial success. And we follow those. I mean, I can remember absolutely being um, entrenched in those. And I think as men, we might follow all of them. We might pick one, we might pick two, and that becomes our measure of success. And at the end of the day, it's conditioned and it's from someone else, basically. So for me, it's got to come down to what is your measure of success. And you've got to ask that for yourself. So for me... Um, it, it really comes down to, can I live 100% as me? Uh, and then that means living by my values. But more so for me, it means tapping into what I truly need uh, and what I need to feel. So one of the things I want to, I suppose, personally do and then encourage certainly my clients and stuff that I work with is to tap into our body a bit more and how we want to feel. So for me, um, I... I'm super curious. I love figuring things out. So I have to feel a sense of wonder. If I can't have that, you know, I'm going to be unhappy. There's going to be a feeling of incongruence or something in me. So if I am living with a sense of wonder, then I'm going to feel, in my mind, an element of success. Uh, for another big one for me is connection. So connection um, in general, in terms of a relationship, but also with people that matter to me, there's a connection right now, having a real conversation kind of thing. It's a big thing for me. Um, but then more so in my intimate relationships, it's about significance. And, um, and even though it's a, a, an external validator, I suppose, it's something that comes because I 
know who I am and I'm content and happy in my own skin. So that element of significance and connection. So those are big success measures for me. And it comes down to do I feel those. Now that doesn't speak anything about money or my business, which of course come into it. But the main thing for me is those things, money, business, success and so on, what do they provide for me? And at the end of the day, they're going to provide for me connection, significance, awe and wonder and experience and all that stuff. So you mentioned before like your teenage self and how far you've come from being this teenager where you're almost like taught to like shelter your emotions. So if you were today to talk to that younger Mike Campbell, what would you share with him? Um, what would I share with my younger self? Um, probably loads. So um, <laughs> if I only had a couple of minutes with him, I'd have to narrow it down. Um, I think it would probably be... So one of the big things for me now is around self-awareness. And I think I've kind of had that, but... I wasn't aware of it. So I'd probably just say something like, dude, first of all, um, have a think about what's really important to you. Like, doesn't mean you can't go to university, for example, and, you know, have the good times that you did have and all that kind of stuff, but just make sure that you know what everything's about and what you're about. And as long as you figure out what you're about, then you can use that to figure out, you know, your path and certain things. So, so really tap into what you're about. It, the, yeah, the other thing would actually be, by the way, you might not be aware of it, but you, you've always had and you always will have this need to kind of do your own thing. Keep fucking doing that, man. Absolutely keep doing that. Yeah. Did you take many risks when you were younger, like finding your own thing, or did you keep falling into the path of just going, no, 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 follow the uni path and you know, follow yeah. the crowd as well? Absolutely, following the crowd. I, I think that was just huge. For me, I had this element of wanting to be a bit different, but I was still... You know, it was only just off the centre, you know, because absolutely, you know, I think we, we, but of course I'll take ownership of it, me, absolutely wanted to be like everyone, right, and be accepted, um, 100%. Um, but still, yeah, totally, little elements where I was um, maybe audacious, and, and I think I always had a, a confidence in myself um, to have a crack, basically, yeah but not like way off the line. I was still very much in that. Go to university, you know, get some qualifications, do the right thing, get some money, get some security. That was the thing that the cloud that kind of hung over the head, I think, of 18 year old Mike. Is there one example you could maybe share with us from your uni days or even high school days where it was, where you went off the track a little bit, where you're like, actually, you look back now and you're like, that was a bit of a defining moment for me, having a little go, but then I went back on track again to, to following the crowd. Is there one sort of thing in particular? So, yeah, well, I'll go just after university, perhaps. So um, we spoke before about me playing rugby, and it was something I'd always kind of wanted to do. I never, and this is part of my story, I never really understood what it would require. I had all this natural talent, and I didn't really capitalise on it. Um, so I, but I did use rugby to travel. So I finished university, started working as a personal trainer, and then essentially my group of friends, everyone then went over to London. That's what you did. You went over to London, you did your time. And I was like, I want to go to London. Everyone goes to London. I want to do the different thing. So I went and played rugby in the back country, Scotland, because I wanted to go and do my own thing. I moved there, I didn't know anyone. Um, and on one hand, it was scary as hell, not knowing anyone. But on the other, it was exciting as hell. It was awesome. I was doing my own thing. It was a completely new adventure. Um, and, and for me... I know a big part of it was fuck everyone else and them going to London and doing their thing. I'm going to go do my thing. Yeah. And the buzz of the town as well. Having a Kiwi guy like this walking around. It must <laughs> have been yeah, <laughs> exciting as well. Because well, obviously every second Aussie and Kiwi are in London. So that definitely is and would have been a payoff for you there. Yeah, absolutely. I did end up going to London. 100%. Oh, mate, you ruined um, the story. <laughs> but, but, but that's what it that's, was for yeah. me. It was about doing my own thing. Yeah. yeah. So now you're in this space of obviously having conversations all the time, but is there one person in particular that you just love to sit down with and have a conversation with apart from Scott Tweedy? <laughs> Tick. <laughs> um, there is. So, well, absolutely, hundreds. I mean, shit, I could talk all day about the people I'd like to have conversations with, um, current and through history. But at the end of the day, for me, it would come down to um, one person, that's my mum. So my mum passed away about five, almost five years ago. And so that was a period where I was really starting to work on myself and, and start this journey, I suppose. Um, mum had been diagnosed with lung cancer four years prior, so she'd been fighting through that. And so that time for me really reinforced, I suppose, um, my value of health and how we must you know, 
try to look after ourselves, but also live our best lives and actually enjoy the time we have here. I saw mum, you know, kick ass in that four years kind of thing. Um, but I was just starting on that journey. I really was. Um, I'm engaged to my partner Nadia now. Mum never got to meet her. So mum hasn't had that. She never um, saw the stuff that I've done since that time, which is heaps of things, um, in the scale of perhaps, you know, old uni might. Um, so I'd love to sit down and just, one, catch up, have a conversation, talk to her about that stuff, and, yeah, have a, have a nice connection. Mike, is there one thing you never talk about normally, but you're willing to talk about with us today? It's kind of a hard one because... One of the big things for me is, I suppose, living my message. So I always want to be an example of what I'm talking about. Um, therefore, I do try and talk about most things. But I suppose one thing perhaps that would be more um, yeah, deep within me would be, and I think this is probably um, common for a lot of guys, is especially getting into this space, right, uh, of talking about masculinity and, and all that kind of stuff, is that feeling of, is someone going to tap me on the shoulder and say, dude, who the fuck are you? And, you know, essentially being caught out as a fraud kind of thing. Like, what do you know? Who are you to talk about this kind of stuff? Um, so I suppose it's that element of self-doubt, which absolutely comes in from time to time, but more so specifically about that. Um, and then I suppose in alignment with that is, is more just that deep inner voice sometimes that's like, because I don't think for a second that I have all my shit sorted, not at all, but the voice is like, is there, is there going to be a point where all of a sudden there's just going to be this like big fucking meltdown or something? Because I seem to be doing okay and coaching people around on the staff and I know I'm working through all my own shit and all that kind of stuff, but is that coming? And, and it's like this weird, irrational conversation that I have with myself. But um, yeah, I don't really talk about that. So then today's all about conversations. What are like the bigger conversation that we're just not dealing with at the moment that we should be dealing with? And can you give us an example of moving forward, what is that big conversation that men should be having? For me, it's got to be the conversation of what is masculinity? So I can have my own ownership of that and I can coach a few people on it and all that kind of stuff. But on a big scale, every day there's a new generation of males coming through. And... I think on a big scale, we are responsible for fucking up a load of shit that goes on in the world. And I think if we can start to reframe the path from boyhood into manhood and what it means to be a well-rounded, healthy, compassionate, strong, empathetic, resilient man, um, we can have a huge impact on the day-to-day -day lives of many people around the world. What do you think, like... In this day and age as well, social media, mm -hmm. online presence, obviously there's so many more conversations happening digital, digitally. So do you reckon this is changing the, the shape of, of men as well? Men and men, men culture, I suppose, is being created online as well as opposed to now in the pub, as opposed to in the yeah. workplace and stuff like that. Do you find that it's um, you know, like changing the culture a bit of, of what it means to be a man? Yeah, I think the culture is definitely changing, right? So you know, on one hand, I kind of talk about there's all this kind of shit that we need to work on. But at the same time, there's heaps of work happening and it's great. There's heaps more diversity. There's so many more options for men to be themselves, which is amazing. Um, and we see that in social media and stuff, absolutely. One of the things I want to be aware of myself and perhaps encourage certainly the people I work with about around social media is, one, that we're not seeking external validation <clears throat> from that. And two, then just putting our highlights out there and, you know, the length there maybe of, of external validation. And, of course, realising that other people are doing that and not to compare. Um, so I think that's just a, a dangerous space um, if that's, you know, the trap to fall into. Checking phone, oh, how many likes did I get, all that kind of stuff, right? Like, you validate you, not some people through an app. Um, but... I think there's so much power in social media and you know our current day and age to be yourself and to express it, and that's amazing. Yeah. And also connect with people that are like oh, you as well that yeah. never knew existed. Absolutely. So even with the show, I've connected with um, people in, in all over the show, but in LA, I did an interview um, already, and that was essentially through social media. 
Um, so, I mean, that stuff's amazing. I wouldn't be able to have this conversation to the scale that, I'm, that I am currently and attempting to with the show without something like social media, yeah. Well, Mike Campbell, it has been an absolute pleasure to share conversations beyond the beers with you, Thanks, even though mate. we're having a beer. So thank you for opening up and sharing all that insight with me as well. Even though I spent 12 whole days riding on a bike in Cambodia with you, there's some stuff there I've never heard of. So that was fantastic. Cool. Mate, thank you for coming and putting me under the pump and, um, and listening and connecting. Absolutely. That was awesome. And, and thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Um, that's our show for today. And if there's one thing I want to leave you guys with, it's make sure you share this with someone um, perhaps that could use it. And then actually go out into the world and start breaking the stereotype, having these kind of more meaningful conversations and allowing yourself to ask for help if you need it. And also ask someone else if they need help. Talk to a mate and ask how he's really going and have those more meaningful conversations. Thanks for tuning in to today's show. Make sure to share this with at least one man who you think will enjoy or benefit from it. For those men who want to be part of conversations like this in person, click the link below and go to beyondthebeers.tv slash event to find out all the details and get your tickets for Beyond the Beers, the event, conversations and cool shit for men. That's happening in Sydney on Saturday, August 20th. There'll be a variety of conversations and cool shit to help you learn, share, and grow, and then start embracing more meaningful conversations in your own life. To learn more about Mike and how you can work with us, visit mikecampbell.com.au for loads of free content and information on how to become a better man and get more out of your life, including our half-day Solve Yourself workshop, laying the foundations for personal mastery. If you want to connect with or follow today's guests, we'll leave all the details in the show notes below. Otherwise, go out into your own life and start having the conversations that matter. Ask for help if you need it. Ask a mate how he's really doing or if he just wants to have a real conversation and go beyond the beers.